Welcome. In this module, we'll take a look at the third part of boundary defense or perimeter defense. Now, this is the complete set of CIS controls. And right now, we're looking at CIS control 12, boundary defense. And this is the third part in the, in the module series. And we've already talked about the system entity relationship diagram with the help of which we're conducting various control measures on the network devices in order to manage and control and document the network edge network devices so that we are able to protect our internal network. So 12.9 tells us deploy application layer filtering proxy server. Ensure that all network traffic to or from the internet passes through an authenticated application layer proxy that is configured to filter unauthorized connections. So here, uh, this particular feature of application layer filtering proxy has intelligence uh, for the uh, OSI model to work up to the application layer so that it has the intelligence of what applications are being used, what ports they use, what feature sets they use, and what the traffic pattern for those applications is. And if there are any anomalies, then that uh, particular um, application layer filtering proxy should be able to detect and then block uh, that, uh, that anomaly, anomalous traffic or anomaly in the traffic. 12.10 tells us decrypt network traffic at the proxy. So this is very important. Decrypt all encrypted network traffic at the boundary proxy prior to analyzing the content. However, the organization may use whitelists of allowed sites that can be accessed through the proxy without decrypting the traffic. So if there is any encrypted traffic which is, which is coming in or going out, then it needs to be analyzed. And you know, before analysis of that traffic, it needs to come to the proxy and we need to decrypt that particular stream. However, if there, is, uh, if there are some allowed sites and we understand that we need to direct encrypted traffic, web traffic, for example, to an external website and it needs to be encrypted, then that, that can be entered in a whitelist. So this is the intelligent layer seven application layer uh, traffic proxy, which is going to help us perform security functions, which are applicable at that layer of the iOS model. And then 12.11, require all remote login to use multi-factor authentication. So all the users who are going to access the network from outside and administer, for example, servers or come in and perform maintenance, they should be given um, uh, tools which are one-time password, uh, OTP token password capability, for example, which integrates very nicely with the edge devices of uh, next generation firewalls. And uh, the one-time password uh, token capability sometimes is also available as the login um, uh, console or the login, login feature set and, and the software uh, particular tool that is given to remote, remotely access the, uh, the internal firewall um, uh, through an encrypted session. Sometimes that feature set is available inside that as well, or otherwise you can integrate, for example, Juniper remote access devices or remote firewalls with the OTP capability so that any user who is, needs to come in and remotely access the network and is sitting outside the network, there is an additional security uh, feature and you need to have a one-time password token and you need to not only enter the login password, but the special OTP uh, pin that will be issued to you, that needs to be entered correctly as well. And if that is not entered, then the access will be restricted. And 12.12 uh, 12 is manage all devices remotely logging into internal network. So we need to scan all the enterprise devices remotely logging into the organization's network prior to accessing the network to ensure that each of the organization's security policies has been enforced in the same manner as the local network devices. And you can, um, uh, so what happens is that there are some additional features uh, with the help of which we can restrict or scan the remote devices and before they access the internal network. And this can, uh, for example, be done through the uh, network access control or net NAC feature. So network admission control, for example, a NAC feature has a quarantine area and any device which is trying to access the network, it will scan and make sure the antivirus is updated, the policies are all updated, uh, the patches are updated, and then only it will allow the uh, computer or the remote session. So this is very important. We need to manage all the devices 
remotely logging into the internal network. And this usually happens with third party um, uh, IT providers who are hired as third parties to manage your servers, for example, or manage certain applications. And we need to manage their computers as well so that they comply with our security policy. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.